So it, it's been a long time since we've done um, a film and discussion uh, YouTube series of videos. I honestly can't remember the last time we did one. It is a thing. Uh, we'll talk about you. you you've already done. Um, you've talked about Avengers. You've reviewed it on your channel. I have. I'm going to pose a quick question: Are comic book movies dying? No. They're not, because I think there's enough variation out there to keep the genre sort of interesting. And I, I think the, the way to think about comic book movies is, because I know you hear a lot of people make the mm. argument there's too many, saturating the market, blah blah blah. See, I, I agree with that. Person. To me, comic book movies started as a subgenre and they're now a genre. You know, you would never make the argument there's too many comedies, there's too many action films, too many horrors coming mm -hmm. out. You know, yeah. it's some will be good, some won't. Qu quality there is... For me, I think that what Marvel is doing, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, um, with the interconnected movies, is pretty much all great stuff. You know, I, I think they're fairly consistent. You know, yeah. they haven't made a duff one yet. Um, whereas you get your sort of like dime a dozen superhero films. I mean, you know, look at the first two Fantastic Four movies, The Green Lantern. You get the ones that just sort of don't do anything. See, that links into the point I was going to make. Which is? Like a movie. I think you're going to see, and I don't think it's going to be Ant-Man, I think mm. Ant-Man's going to do steady business. Not great, steady. But I think you're going to see your first big, expensive, proper comic book bomb. And I think it will actually be, in all honesty, and I don't want to hate against the movie because it's received so much negative press. Yeah. But I think it will be Josh Trank's Fantastic Four. See, for me, I, I look at that, you know, you... You read about it, you see the trailer and stuff. I just think that's going to be one that comes out is fine and people Exists. forget about yeah. it in six months' time. Yeah. It, it looks like it's going to do absolutely nothing new. Um, for me, I think the one the one that's going to damage it, the genre, will be possibly Suicide Squad. I think Batman mm. v Superman won't bomb because it's too no, big. No, it's too, too big. I mean, my mum and dad will probably go see that. Yeah. Whereas Suicide Squad is, even though you know it has like those characters in it, the yeah. DC universe and all that, it's a bit more risky. It's received quite a bit of negative press itself. But I think that'll be the more interesting film than Batman v Superman. I don't doubt it is, but we're talking yeah. about which. Oh, we which, think will yeah, bomb. you're right. You know, you're right, you're I, right. I, I honestly think that that'll be the one that general audiences go, "Wow, <laughs> yeah, we don't know how to take this." Yeah, you know, whether or not it bombs, I don't know, but I think that's the one. In the sort of upcoming films that are, yeah. that are coming out, that's the, the sort of riskiest, that's the most likely. That the might just sink without yeah. the trash. I don't think we're going to see the bubble burst, to be honest with you. I think we might see less of the sort of standalone uh, comic book movies. You know, I don't think we'll see studios greenlighting as many because they all want interconnected universes. Yeah. I think those will die a death and we'll be left with, you'll have your X-Men... Um, franchise, you'll have your MCU and you'll have your DC Cinematic Universe, you'll have three big players, pillars, yeah. Which, to be fair, is the comic book industry in general. Pretty much, really. Yeah. But I think we'll probably see fewer of the smaller, mid budget ones. I mean, we've got like Deadpool and Gambit coming out, which probably fit that yeah. uh, mold, but again, they are part of the X Men thing. So. Well, I know, aren't they looking at linking, because they're both Fox properties, aren't they looking at somehow linking the Josh Trench Fantastic Four? To the X Men, wasn't that something? I think that was they've they've sort of mooted down the line. stayed open to it. They said, you know, we're, we're not saying that we're doing it, but we're not saying that mm. we're not going to do it somewhere down the line. I reckon they'll wait and see how it performs at the box office, totally. and then do a sequel where they tie it in somehow to, to the X Men franchise. Um, I don't really give a shit about the Fantastic Four. Um. For me, right? I you turned me on to just to move on to. Uh, Comics, isn't it? Yeah. You turn me on to Hickman's Fantastic Four. Yeah. I got the first trade of that, really uh, big omnibus, really enjoyed it. Here's the thing I don't understand why they gave Fantastic Four another roll of the dice. Part of it does because it's a property that has been laid fallow, because it has been a while since Tim yeah. Story's Fantastic Four movies. But fear. <laughs> I'm going to compare it with, say, Ant-Man and Guardians of the Galaxy. Nobody knows about them outside of... The, the, we've reached the point now where we're hitting the obscure characters. Yeah. Let's face it. I mean, 
Iron Man was a C-lister, which they've now moved up to an A-lister. But, you know, he, I mean, he had, like, cartoons and shit yeah. looking around. Like, people sort of knew yeah, of they, Iron Man. They, yeah, they knew of him. He yeah. existed in yeah. pop culture, right? Here's the thing. With Fantastic Four, and Fantastic Four does, but the, and, and all their products of the time, the first two Fantastic Four movies, they're, they're, they're not good. They're, they're not. They're, 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 they're very bland. Um, yeah. Kids like them. Um, I mean, I've I've got two nephews and they will happily sit in front of the Fantastic Four. Yeah. But my point being is, it's just who cares? <laughs> yeah, I mean the Cronenberg the Cronenbergian direction which Trank seems to be taking is interesting. That's one thing that I haven't talked about. I mean, I'm sure that anybody who watches this channel or Sam's knows that um, basically. We're both huge Star Wars fans. Oh yeah, like like you read about. Um, <laughs> I don't think I've ever done a Star Wars related video though that I can think of. Here's the, here's the thing, and it still links to Star Wars because someone had a brilliant. Um, someone mentioned something to me about the two different. Keep going on the sci sci-fi fandoms, Star Wars and Star Trek. Yeah. Yeah. And they said that Star Wars more more general people are Star Wars fans, but they're not as diehard as into it. Whereas Star Trek fans are literally everything, we'll go to a convention, we'll wear the outfit. I mean, you do have, have that for, for Star Wars. Yeah. Um, sure. But, but I mean, I think it's the, the thing of, where you said you're not on a Star Wars video, I have, because I did my quick trilogy. Remember when I did the in-depth box set? Yes, video? I do remember that. And yeah. the funny th th thing is, it's because that many people have talked about Star Wars in that many different formats, magazine articles, because it's just... It's Star Wars, mm. and you sit there and you go, "What have I got new to bring yeah. to this discussion?" Yeah, you know? it is. Well, that's like one of the reasons. I know we're sort of flip flopping, but mm. um, I didn't review sort of Age of Ultron straight away. Yeah, I mean, I said in my review, you know, and I stand by this. It was a film I felt I needed to digest for a couple of weeks yeah. before I could form fully form an opinion on it. Um, but then, even like having done that, I was a bit like, well, every man and his dog have reviewed this movie. Yeah. Like, what do I have to say about it that's any different that's not already been covered by, like, screen junkies or, you know, whoever the fuck out there who are reviewing it? Um, and to be honest, it's like I nearly didn't. It's yeah. like I don't think I ever reviewed The Dark Knight, which is one that obviously you know. Yeah. I love that movie. Oh, God, yeah. You know, I'd I left that film with a raging fucking bad boner. <laughs> yeah. It was it was an incredible film but I had nothing to say to add to the discussion, to no. add to the conversation. And you've said the same on your channel on your most recent video that you're probably not going to review the bigger stuff. No, because because the thing is, why why is your men than me will have their say before I will because Like me. Yep. That's not done it. <laughs> but that's not getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> but the the thing is, right, everyone has an opinion, everyone wants opinions valid. But for the really big films, professional critics are gonna go and they're gonna have a look, and you're gonna have all the all the internet people. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are there has been occasions when it's been a big movie, and I've gone, I saw that, I saw something in that, and I don't think they did. Look at us with Man of Steel. We have plenty. Oh my god! Yeah, on Man we just like a forty-five minute review of Man of Steel, yeah, which what, I still, what? I sometimes because we filmed that like two years yeah. ago. I sometimes go back and rewatch yeah, it. Yeah, I do I, actually. It's, it's I've like, watched our review more than I've watched Man of Steel because <laughs> it's more entertaining. Well, the effects are better. For <laughs> yeah. <a start. laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I completely, completely agree. By the way, my neck still hurts where you snapped it at the end. So. <laughs> yeah, it got weird for a second. I don't understand why you didn't just run underneath your eye beam. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. Well, basically, we've got to say, it was a 40-minute review, that Man of Steel. For our respective partners, bless them, it was an eight-hour review, weren't it? It was, a, <laughs> it was a long weekend for them, yeah. to be fair. It's like, look, just get on camera and shut the fuck up about it, please. Well, it's like we've said, you know, it, we saw, like, the way we saw mm. Rage of Ultron, you saw it in your gaff. Yeah. You know, I, I saw it in my town, and then a couple of weeks, no, it was literally the week yeah, after, wasn't it? We got together it. and went to see it a second time. Yeah. Um, but we've said... You know, I'm I'm throwing the gauntlet down now. We have to see Batman v Superman together. Yeah, yeah. We're. I feel bad because I feel like we're doing the thing, but the movie's not been. You know, almost the trailer and da da da. And you don't want to be negative and go, oh, the film's gonna suck. I'm really quite worried because 
I've got um, I've got a buddy called Wayne, right? And I I, I use Wayne as uh, my actual litmus test for for a better term, normal people, right? We are comic book nerds. We always always have always will yeah. love this stuff. Wayne is um, he's he's a guy. He's, he's in his late forties, and he likes comic book and science fiction stuff, but he's not into it. Yeah. And even Wayne Wayne said he said Superman's like a god. And Batman's just a bloke with some gadgets. How's that gonna work? And I, I couldn't argue with him. No. I, I, I couldn't. That's been my main problem. I mean, I, I have a lot of problems with how mm. the film's shaping up, you know, from Zack Snyder to yeah. the Man of Steel, da da da. But it's like, the, the main problem is for me, I, and maybe I'm just not, like, I don't have that creative mind, but I don't see how you can put those characters on screen in a film together. I think you can get away with it in comics, you know, you can stretch reality a lot further, but. Well, I just can't figure out how to do it. The thing is, he's, he's going to whip out Kryptonite, isn't he? Or, or some derivative. It's good. They're going to have to. Yeah, yeah, you need some way of slowing him slowing him down. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, you whip out the Kryptonite, right, that's ten minutes of your third act. Mm. How do you build a, what I'm sure will be a two and a half hour movie a, around mm. that? I mean, that's one thing. Here, right, here is my speculation, actually, here and now. Um, Watchmen and the Dark Knight movies notwithstanding, but Batman v Superman will be the first superhero movie to literally push a three hour cut. You reckon? Just shy of three hours. Yeah. To be honest, is, is there going to be enough substance there to do it? Because I wondered, like, maybe the way they're going to do it is keep them separate for oh. most of the film. I've been trying to avoid stuff yeah. about it, but it's been very difficult. I've heard, is it right if I share some of the things I've heard, what they're going to do? I mean, well, well, we'll preface this bit then with yeah. potential spoilers. Poten for... Potential spoilers, which I've tried to avoid. Batman v Superman. Right, we know, we know we're going to have the scrap. Yeah. I reckon that'll happen at least twice. Yeah. Um, you've got Luther's mach machinations. You've got the um, introduction of Wonder Woman. Uh, the rumour is is that Jason Momoa's Aquaman's going to appear on camera. So even if though, even if those two are like extended ca cameos, you've yeah. still got to find time. The rumour is, and this makes me shudder, Doomsday. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, yeah. and it's too much for the. I think the problem is. Sorry to cut you no, off. No, 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 no. I'm not sorry, really. Yeah. Um, but but ba basically, <laughs> um, the, the film has sort of so much heavy lifting to do. Yeah. Because we've only had one movie, Man of Steel, which made no effort to set up the Justice League, really. Yeah. You know, it had Easter eggs and stuff, but... For me, if I could just insert yeah. for a second, it's almost like, I don't want to compare it too much to Marvel, where, where basically, they went, yeah, Iron Man's hit, we're doing Avengers next. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, slow down. <laughs> well, Marvel had a plan, they have a plan. Yeah. And I must admit, one thing I worried about... To another topic, yeah, yeah. Like, this, this, this is a shot. Shot. like <laughs> bing bing bing, this is, rabbit. yeah. This is how hungover Sunday morning minds work. <laughs> yeah. um, it's like when they announced that Spider Man um, was going to be in the MCU, and oh, yeah, yeah, it was like rejoiced, you know, it was the day that Marvel broke the internet. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember being at like I was at work that day and I saw it, um, when I before I left. Um, the house and I was like, oh my god, you know, I don't think I'm capable of doing anything today. Yeah. I'm like too excited. But and then I, the more I thought about it, the more I started to worry, thinking, well, how much is this going to interfere with Marvel's planned slate of mm. movies? And, but it turns out, and what sort of gives me um, re, uh, sort of reassurance is that they planned two. Yeah, they had they, one they, with them in. They had two boards in the writers' room, didn't yeah, they? You know, apparently so. Yeah. yeah. And you can sort of buy that they totally would do that. You oh, know, if the negotiations are ongoing. Completely. I mean, that just brings you back to the business side of things for a sec. How badly did Sony screw up with their Spider-Man property? I know that you and I... This is one of the few things that we sort of disagree on. Like, yeah. You have a lot more time for The Amazing Spider-Man than I do. Yeah. Whereas I really like the second one. Well, I say I really like it. You find more of it to like... Than I do. It's a it's a cheesecake of a film. Yeah. It's like I know it's bad for me, I know it's unfulfilling, but I enjoy it while I'm consuming it. Yeah. For me, when I watch a film, I like to either not be aware yeah. of the passage of acts, story acts. You know, I was in, I'm not I'm not invested in the story. 
I, I'm just I'm just there. I'm yeah. along for the ride. Or I do like to go right. Okay, I know where we're going. And I remember watching Amazing Spider-Man two. Okay, first act more of the first act. We're in the second. No, we're still in the. F- All right, we're in the third. Ooh, what act am I in? Where yeah. am I in this story? Drowning. See, I completely agree, but while I was watching it, I was like, it was sort of just washing over me, and I was like, I'm just enjoying this for the cartoon that it is. I loved the quips. I loved, I will say this, they actually got the fact Spider-Man's main weapon, not the powers, his his sense of humour, his Mm. his mouth. I mean, Kevin Feige said that, hadn't he? He said, we're going to be focusing on that for the new Spider-Man. His main thing's going to be the quips. Yeah, and, you know, that's... That's fine. I yeah. just I put and obviously you know I've reviewed this movie. I did like a yeah. twenty minute review or something. So go check that out. But, yeah. Um. I didn't think Andrew Garfield was overly good at delivering them, but I feel like we should probably tie this back to yeah. the DC Cinematic Universe because yeah. we've gone so far off track. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah um, expect delays. Um, <laughs> but yeah, basically what we were saying was <laughs> there's so much groundwork for Batman v Superman to do to lead to the Justice League. That it feels like it, they're not going to have time to like introduce Wonder Woman, introduce Aquaman. It, it just it feels like it's going to be a bit of a mess. Maybe if they do a three-hour cut, you might be able to get away with yeah. it. What? See, we've look, we've done the negatives. I'll talk about now. We yeah. should talk about the positives mm-hmm. for BBS because because they are, they are there. In terms of script, like you said, being a script to a mess. One of the things is right. I'm going to go ahead and say it. Ben Affleck as Batman. No problem with it. As much as I love Nolan's trilogy, fair play to it, one of the reasons why I can always love it, it's done. It's complete, it's finished, put it in the box. That can be your version of Batman if you want it. I like the fact that they are literally going, we're not doing Nolan's Batman, that's finished. I see that as a strength of the film. For me, my biggest negative, even though we're trying to talk about positives, can't get past it, Eisenberg is Luther. Just... Just no. I know that's a big sticking point for you, and, and that's one of the things I don't mind. I mean, I think it's a bit on the nose, you know, they said, oh, we want him to be a sort of Mark Zuckerberg type. Yeah, so you're, we're going to get a guy who Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, it's not, mm. you know, it might be a bit too on the nose, but... Um, you I'm, unfriended me, Superman, now you <laughs> don't. <laughs> I'll be interested to see what they do with it. It's, yeah. it's, it's not the Luther that I know from the comics that I've read. And what I, I do want to say as well, because... People can. It seems to me whenever you're sort of critical of the DC Cinematic Universe or DC in general, it's because you're a Marvel fanboy. We like both. We do like both. Yeah. And the reason that we sort of we have these conversations is that Superman is a character that means a lot to you. Yeah. He is your favourite character, and for personal reasons, yeah. he means uh, a lot to you. Yeah. I have that relationship with Bats. That's why we both want to see these characters in this universe served properly on screen by filmmakers that care. You know, and I, I, I've been in scenario like in situations where I've criticised DC and, and had my head bitten off. Yeah. You know, you can like both, it's a sports mentality and da 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 It's like, I do like both. Yeah, yeah. That's why I'm fucking criticising it. I also like good fucking movies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's... It's ridiculous because, you know, flashback seven years, Dark Knight came out and DC was killing it. Yeah. You know, Warner Brothers was killing it. They were miles ahead of Marvel. Yeah. I know Dark Knight came out same year as Iron Man. Really, compare the two. Iron Man and the Dark Knight, there is no comparison to me. One yeah. is a film, one is a movie. Yeah. You know, and that's a- absolute, when absolutely. they were on top. It was Man of Steel was so mediocre. I know that you have more time for it than I do, but in my not opinion, that much more. Um, it just it, it it's such a wobbly foundation on which to build a cinematic universe. That's why I worry, and that's why I'm critical. And I'm critical from a place of love because I fucking love Batman. Yeah, you love Superman. We both want to see our favourite characters done right. And also, this leads me to what I think will be a problem with the film. They have to please both fan bases, which means nobody can win the fight properly. This is Freddy vs. Jason. Nobody could win on Freddy vs. No. Jason. That's why at the end of Freddy vs. Jason, even though his head's been cut off, you start having winking at the end, Freddy said, oh, this is always part yeah. of my plan. And then you just end the movie, because it's like, this could just go on and on and on. Maybe one of the problems with this, from that perspective, is the title. You know, maybe yeah. don't call it Batman v Superman. Call it just call it Dawn of Justice. You know, you don't need them in the title because all you need is the logo. And- we'll go see it. It'll make a ton of money. I mean, to me, this just to link it back to the original question. 
And it's like you said, they were killing it. This, for me, is the problem with comic book movies at the minute. You're getting really interesting characters like Guardians of the Galaxy. No one gave a shit about Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. That was an E tier, right? Yeah. That was obscure of the obscure. And it's great. Here's the thing. And I love that. I love that obscure characters you're giving their day in court. The current moment to this, and this is why I think there's going to be a huge problem, in those rooms with the suit is a comic book. Yeah, everything's getting greenlit. And I, I work in a school. And one of the guest speakers well, he was a comic book artist. Right. Right. And I was talking to him, and he, he sort of left the industry because he said that a lot of the thing, comic, things that they're doing in comics now <coughs> are just basically dry run screenplays. Mm. And I think that over the last six or seven years, I think that really has happened right. for a lot of the books. It's like Green, Green Arrow at the minute, the comic book, has introduced Felicity Smoke and John Diggle, it's like watching an episode of the TV show. Yeah. So part of you is thinking cross-pollination, cross-pollination, great, but is it just going to become this big, amorphous... Muddle? See, that I don't agree agree with as such. I mean, I know yeah. that Harley Quinn was born in Batman the Animated Series, yeah. she's probably the exception that proves the rule, but I don't think that it sh like comics and movies should cross-pollinate. Yeah. I think that cinematic universes, what Marvel's doing is great, you know, I like the fact that you've got the Netflix series, mm. Dead Oh, we need to talk. Oh, that was standing. That was how you do it. You've got Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which started off shit and became a guilty pleasure. Mm. You've got Agent Carter, which I haven't yet watched. I've heard good things. But it all ties in, and you know where you stand with, with their sort of product. Yeah. Whereas DC, and this is another criticism I have, is that it's so unclear. I mean, can you imagine? To, I mean, we know, because obviously we... <laughs> pardon me. Well, read up on this shit. Yeah. But the average person channel flicking, you know, they, they land on the green arrow and there's mention of Gotham or yeah. something, or there's, there's mention you of... Ferris, uh, you know, yeah, right, you yeah. So has this got anything to do with that Batman Superman movie I saw a trailer to? Or the Gotham about. show. Or the Gotham what? show, yeah. yeah. The, even the shows don't all cross over. And then you've got Supergirl coming out, which I actually like the look of, I know you don't. Bev, Bev watched the pilot mm. and she, she liked it. She said... The way they're tying in the comic book mythology is well done. Yeah. Just like with the Flash and the the Arrow show. So, you know, it's for me, it's too. I, it's just too much product. I physically don't have the time mm. to watch all the comic book stuff that's out there. Right. I watched. Oh, I, I watched Flash. I watched Arrow. I watched the movies. Um, Agent Carter didn't see it. Physically didn't have time. Constantine. Didn't see it, didn't have the time because I can't just watch nothing but comic book shit. Yeah, no, as much as I love it, yeah. you know. Well, that that is part of the problem, but I, I think there are answers, and I think mm. when you have it streamlined and you have it all tied in, that's that's a healthy way of doing it, so that people can know where they are in relation to everything. Now, the the DC thing is so confusing because you've yeah. got. Arrow and the Flash crossover. You've got Supergirl, which might crossover. You've got the um, S Heroes of Tomorrow or Heroes of oh, the yeah, Future spin-off that's, yeah, that's, that's coming, coming out. And uh -huh. then, but you then on the other side, you've got Gotham and Constantine, which didn't crossover. But they want to bring Constantine. They, they, basically, Stephen Amell, the guy who's playing yeah. Arrow, he's talking about them picking up Constantine so they can have it fit into that universe. And if I I have limited amount of space <laughs> in my head to follow these continuities yeah. As, from a fan and a lot of the questions I've been posing I don't actually I'm just playing devil's advocate yeah, on a couple of these things but I, I will say this right it's getting to where there's that much to follow it's getting no fun yeah and that's from a fan right it's like just to talk about Avengers 2 for a minute um Avengers 2, Joss Whedon, and we need to talk about how odd jo Joss is being, I think. Well, I know that we've both sort of touched on it before. Yeah. He's basically biting the hand at the feet. But, but my point being, right, Avengers, is Aven Avengers 2, as complex as that got, you could still sort of watch that, having not seen any of the others, and still follow it. Yeah. But only just. Yeah. Only just. 
It's like, I think that's why people liked Ant-Man, or, sorry, Guardians, because whilst Guardians was tied in, sort of, it was literally new, fresh start, I can sit this, um, everything will be explained to me. Yeah. To be honest, I think that's why Ant-Man might find its audience. Well, to be honest, I think that the Marvel films have largely done that well. It's like yeah. Iron Man 3 is one of my favourites, and that's largely standalone. Yeah. You know, I know he's reeling from the effects of the Avengers, but the actual story of Iron Man 3 is fairly self contained. Yeah, because he made his own monsters, that's yeah, the whole thing, isn't it? How he, it, it as is um, For the Dark World, mm. which I know is a bit of a placeholder movie, but. Yeah. And then you've got Winter Soldier, which is probably the most connected. Um, but but even then, off, one of the best films. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's definitely in the um, the top three for me. Oh yeah, and Guardians. So like, Marvel are doing it well. I think though with the Avengers picture because it is a film that sort of it's the biggest. And this is what I said in my review. I wanted more of the interconnected tissue. You know, I wanted more leaning towards Ant Man and Civil War. I think we were sold a different film in the trailer because the line that she kept saying was in the teaser. It kept saying change. Nothing lasts forever, yeah. and it was sold up in interviews as a, this will be the, the redefining changer. thing for 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 the Marvel Cinematic U. And the fact that they didn't re didn't make any reference to that in 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 uh, Wind Soldier. Yeah. So when it with I don't everyone else in the movie. So I remember I read the comic book thing and I'm thinking, well they're probably not going to do that. And then oh they are. So that was a big change for the, to the extent that that. Influenced everything else what happened in Winter Soldier. Yeah. I. But here's the thing with Avengers, it sort of didn't. It's basically Shield's gone, Shield's gone. But here's Shield. Wait, what? Yeah. That that was my problem with with Avengers. One of my problems with the Avengers. But my whole thing was they didn't mention anything about the big changes they were going to make in Winter Soldier. It wasn't part of the ad campaign. For the fans, it was. They literally sold it on everything's going to be different. Yeah. yeah. And it wasn't. No, it, it wasn't. There were there were two. There's a new team. There's a B team. That's yeah. that's it. Yeah that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. Spoilers for Age of Ultron. Yeah. I want to finish by, and I know we we do this regularly, putting you on the spot and asking you what's next for your channel because I watch your channel. Right. And you know your your videos are very few and far between at the moment. As, yeah. As mine have been. Um. But I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna put on the Canon. Um, Retrospective that you asked me to do. They don't know about that. Uh, it's right. basically it's a retrospective on on canon films that I'm going to do. They were the slot masters of the uh, mid '80s to early '90s. So basically, I'm I'm going to do that, um, and I'm I'm just going to see where it goes. To be honest, it will be entirely reliant on requests. If you ask me to do something, I will try and do it. I've had a few people asking me for a hundred uh, favorite movies. Like I said, the list is fried. If you want me to redo that, you've got to give me some time to read the list. Yeah. Which ain't no quick yeah. Um But yeah, you ask me for it, I'll do it. Apart from... Donkey? <laughs> yeah, Jack, you've been sending emails under your different name again. <laughs> Admit to it. You know you did it. Yeah. Yeah. I have problems. <laughs> so on that highbrow note. <laughs> yeah, so what we'll do, we'll leave it there. Um, as always, if you haven't already subscribed to Sam, go do so. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. You know, if you'd like to see us do more videos together and tackle certain topics, leave a suggestion in the comments. You know, we're, we're open to suggestions and shit. Maybe next yep. time we'll together we'll film something. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching, guys, and as always, we'll see you in the next video. Tati bye.